What I'm going to demonstrate here is, is actually how to use a, a vacuum press. Um, this is a vacuum press. Uh, this white malamine uh, chipboard is uh, what they call the platen. And uh, it's got grooves cut into it to allow air to evacuate. And they all lead to this hole where the nozzle from the vacuum pump is inserted. Uh, when you're doing flat work, you would generally put a, uh, a call, a flat piece of uh, what I use is, is uh, usually um, mace night with the white finish on it for my call. The reason I like the white finish is that it, it uh, it's easier to, it's, it's less likely to stick, but I always still wax. You always want to, you know, whenever you're using something that you don't want to stick, either use wax or packing tape, especially if you're veneering face down. If you're doing two faces at the same time, you need to have a call on top as well to distribute the pressure. Again, it doesn't have to be very thick, eighth inch, whatever. The thing about the one on top, it needs to be pretty much exactly the size of the piece that you're, the panel. You don't want it to overhang because it'll pull down. It'll probably break, actually, the pressure is enough to cause it to break. But if it doesn't, it'll cause it to bridge and it'll create a gap just past the edge where it's not putting enough pressure. Uh, and then the, the system, uh, this is a urethane bag. It's, it's the tougher, the heat sells some vinyl bags. Uh, they're less expensive. Um, uh, so when you make a form, you're making it you know, pretty sturdy. I just brought this as an old form. Actually, originally, this form, I used clamping. Um, but you know, a form like this works uh, just as well in the vacuum bag. Uh, it's the spacing you want um, is dependent upon how thick your skin is. Um, and the rule here he gives is if you're working with a if you're working with a 3 8 skin you want the spacing three inches apart and normally you would do that as a grid uh, you can get away with doing it linear like this uh, at this this size but generally you want it as a grid because you you also want to support uh, when you really suck this down if I really suck it down, I'll feel the ribs. So if you have some supports going this way, uh, it would be better. Um, but as I say, I designed this form. This form was built for actually using clamps. Uh, but it was, it was a small enough one to bring along. Uh, so if it's 3 eighths, you want to use uh, 3 inch spacing in your grid. If, it's, if you double it up, use uh, 3 quarter. Uh, then you can go to six inches, six inch spacing. So you, you can use up a fair amount of material and your forms can get pretty heavy um, if you're um, working large. And that's why the air bladder system really is an advantage um, because you not only have to wrestle the piece in there into the bag but the form as well because you usually have to put the piece on the, on the form and put it in the bag. So this is their literature, anyway, uh, about how to use their system. So anybody who's interested in looking at that, uh, feel free. OK. So that would be if you're doing flat. Now we're really going to talk about forming curves. And uh, the thing about a, a, a vacuum bag is that you don't need a two-part form. Um, you don't need a two-part form to clamp either. Uh, you just need a lot more clamps. Um, and if you're doing complicated uh, things, form making is kind of a, a, a skill in itself. For a simple, simple arc in a bag, uh, you only need one form. And I didn't bring any cut laminations, so I'm using basically a bending ply to represent that. And the fact is, is that this is also a way of working with bending ply to get bent panels. Um, so, you know, you're kind of getting two lessons in one here. Um, if this were solid wood, what I would do is I would cut a, a test lamination and just bend it. Now that, say that bends fairly easily. So say I'm going to only bend 
four layers of that. So it would only need to be this thick. So I could get away with that. Now, I would probably, maybe if I were wanted, whatever my final dimension I want, I tend to work in, it, it's better to work with odd numbers. Uh, it's the same reason plywood is odd number, you know. You get a better balanced panel. You don't have to, but, you know, it's kind of recommended that you. I mean, a lot of people worry about spring back. A lot of times spring back is not really, you know, that big a deal. Uh, if you look at it this way, whatever the bend you've got, if you take that down and just trace that, then use that as your, you know, that's it, you know. So it, it moved a quarter, you know, it flattened out a quarter of an inch, you know. Who knows? Who cares, you know. Um, so whenever I'm doing this, usually I, when I work with bends or curves, I, I draw a full-size curve. And whatever I actually get, I lay back down on that full-size curve and redraw it. And I'm using that full-size drawing for joinery purposes because when you're working with curves, the square is useless to you. So by having the full-size drawing, you can then have a baseline for perpendiculars and horizontals and be able to, to work that out where things intersect. What is bending plywood? Uh, bending plywood, there, there are two kind of products on the market right now. One is called wiggle wood or, or um, wacky wood, and that's usually 3 8 although I've seen some quarter inch of this around. Uh, it's basically a wood that bends just by itself, you know what I mean? Uh, but it won't hold its shape. It only holds its shape once it's glued to something else, and uh, I mean, basically the same way laminations work. Uh, and then the other is um, Italian poplar, eighth inch material, which is also bends. Now these materials come in sheets, uh, four by eight and eight by four. Uh, there is a distinction between those two, even though it sounds like I'm saying the same thing. Uh, it has to do with the direction of the grain. A four by eight is just like a regular sheet of plywood where the grain's running long way, and an eight by four is running horizontally. And you may want to pick that depending on, you know, what it is you're trying to make or bend. Okay, so those are the two basic bending plies that are on the market. Okay, um, and then what you want to do is you want to have a call for the top. And uh, no, both are too long. Okay, uh, to spread the pressure out evenly across the top. Again, that needs to be waxed or taped so that it won't stick. And you put it on top. Uh, I've spread glue between all these layers, uh, putting glue on both sides, both faces that join together. Uh, and then I just take this. And then if I could get a hand, we we'll just... <clears throat> a lot of times when I put a piece in the form, I might just tape at the center uh, as well, just to kind of hold it in place, especially if it's, if it's a complicated form. Uh, in this case, it's not that complicated, so you can just kind of massage it in place. And then you seal this up. I've got to get this one on first. Let's hold that out. Yeah. I guess it's time. <laughs> this is still going to be a bit of a problem to stretch. When you do, just pull pull the bag at the right at the, right at that corner, just just pull that so it straightens right out. Uh, let me get this started. No, don't go there yet. So 
But this takes a while so with this much air in it, so I can kind of move things around. Uh, although I shouldn't want to move it that much. Put it up here. There we go. Yeah. And the only thing you have to worry about is that sometimes the bag will want to suck under, especially when you've got a lot of resistance and you're forcing it down. Um, I've been known to stand, get up on the table and sit on the piece and uh, work it down. I mean, whatever works. Uh, sometimes when I'm doing a negative, when I am actually doing a concave, I'll actually just get up there and put my knee in it to pull it down. The vacuum won't pull into something. You've got to get it down there and then it'll hold it. Uh, and that's basically it. Now, that, that's one way. Uh, you can use, you can have a piece in the form, in the bag, without the platen. The platen isn't, isn't absolutely required. Uh, and then there's another way that I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you're going to work without the platen, this is a mesh that they, they, they call it an evacuation mesh that uh, you can buy from uh, vacuum systems. This is just uh, gutter screening. You know, you can buy anywhere. Uh, you can use rope. All you want is, is to have uh, an avenue so the air will move to the outlet. And I use this as a, uh, the point of, of plugging in my nipple. It's like a mini platen. Uh, because the form might not fit. Like on my chair, I can just get that form in here. And if there's no way I could have a platen in here with it. Or the form is so complicated that you know you just the platen's just in your way, um, so you could do it without it. So what I would do is put this little piece on, which is like a platen, and then I would run this in, and it doesn't have to go everywhere, and I'd bring it back down to there. And I don't know how this is going to work exactly. Actually, I think I need more in the bag than this. Yeah. All right. Okay. And this seal can actually bend as well. Um, you know, it, it will sometimes in the form It'll curve around. I mean, it, there's a certain point at which it'll fail, but uh, it'll bend a fair amount sometimes to accommodate your form. Oh, you got the flat yeah. I don't know why. What determines the amount of vacuum that you have to apply? Um, so I do 20 pounds or should I do 26 pounds? Cool. That, that's basically it. Okay, I have one more thing I'm going to show you, which is how you can use a vacuum outside of, uh, a form outside of the bag. In fact, uh, this system can be used to uh, do, uh, what do you call them, curved stair stretchers. So this is what's referred to as a lamination bag. And the way it works is that you put your laminations inside of it. spiral staircase. Yeah.
Okay. Um, oh, got to put my uh, evacuation material is, is good here too. I'm sorry? How does that cause the evacuation? I'm sloppy. The pressure of the um, vacuum. So you put on a little bit of pressure just to kind of hold things together you fall back on the old clamps I don't want it that clamped down I'm going to let a little air get back in here because you don't want it too tight because then the pieces won't slide past each other when they need to okay so then you just put it on the form and again here you don't want to clamp too hard because you can deform your piece so you just need to clamp it enough to hold it down but you get the idea even though I haven't really pulled it down as well as I can to the to the en this end you say you got the idea good <laughs> you ready to go a little bit more yeah no th this is really really a, a, a great way actually um, when you're working with bulky things you know to, to basically just use the vacuum as your clamp to hold the laminations together and then just clamp it to the form well I guess I bored you enough